Everybody, welcome back to my Subaru for another Advent Christmas devotion. And we're looking at Luke chapter 1 and really kind of doing a deep dive into this first Christmas, uh, even before Jesus was born, but this encounter that Mary has with Gabriel. And Gabriel will tell Mary three things about this child that she's going to have. One, he's going to be great. He's going to be the most high. He's going to be God himself. Secondly, he is going to reign forever. In other words, this baby is going to have and live eternally. But then thirdly, we learn that God himself, the creator of the universe, is going to become radically weak and vulnerable and become a child, a child that is not only weak and vulnerable, but dependent, dependent upon a couple of teenagers, these teenagers that hold the future of humanity, that, that hold eternal uh, life and salvation, the one who would bring us that in their hands. <laughs> it, it's really strange and odd and incredible and beautiful all at the same time. And there's nothing else like it. No other religion, no other God, no other philosophy uh, even comes close to having a, a God who is not only so powerful that he can speak the universe into existence, but who becomes so low, so humble, so weak, so dependent. But I want you to see that what happens to Mary in the course of this conversation with Gabriel, at first it says that she's troubled, but then it says that she ponders or considers or thinks deeply about what is happening to her. And then it will finally say this, she goes from being greatly troubled to, I am the Lord's servant. May it be to me, may it be to me as you have said. Think about that. That's what happens to you and I when we experience Christmas, when we experience the hand of God, the grace of God, the love of God, that, that a God so powerful and so massive and so big would become so small and so weak and so seemingly insignificant. See, when we recognize that God did that for us, it has the power to radically move us and change us and, and take us from being greatly troubled to, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me, as you have said. That's a surrendering of the heart, a surrendering of the mind, but more importantly, a surrendering of the will. May it be to me. May your will be done, not mine. And see, when this embeds itself in our hearts, when we really understand how humble God came and why He did it, again, it has the power to radically change our lives. Let me give you some examples. It, it can move us from being self-centered to other-focused. It can move us from being insecure about ourselves to having a deeper security in who we are. We won't care so much about other people's opinions because we now walk in what God thinks and His opinion matters most. Some of our doubts and uncertainty and fears become minimized because we walk in the significance and the security of who we are in Christ and what He has done for us. We live with a, a deeper and greater sense of hope and of optimism. And finally, this reality helps us face the difficulties and the pain and the loss of this life. Think about it. Mary completely lost control of her life. She wasn't even allowed to name the baby. And then she would lose control. And she would have to give up this child as Jesus began to walk in his calling. And she would have to witness his crucifixion, his death. But she also got to experience his resurrection. And so Mary would move from being greatly troubled to, I am the Lord's servant, may it be to me, 
whatever you say. And that's the process of the Christian life. That's the journey that you and I are invited into. It's sometimes troubling, but as we let go, as we trust, as we walk in this love and this grace, we begin to experience the freedom and the power of letting go and trusting God. I hope this will help you this Christmas season, whatever you're facing, whatever challenges uh, you are walking in right now. Just know this, you're loved. You are secure in who you are in Christ. In a, amidst all the uncertainty of this life, what is certain is your future. And you can live even in the present with a sense of hope and a sense of optimism. Because this life is not all there is. God has a plan and He's working it out. And you can rest in that. God bless you guys. And I'll see you next time.